What is up everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are talking about when is it time to do a retune. Uh, you've started installing mods, you're learning how to tune, you're getting really excited, you install your next mod, but is it one that you actually need to get in and tune or make changes for? So stick around and we'll talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and as always, if you find any of this content helpful, throw that thumbs up button up there and if you have not for some reason, subscribe, click that button down there, ring the bell so you don't miss out the live stuff. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to learn how to tune. How's my hair looking today? It's a little bit wild. It's been a wild day, but that being said, the truck is back. It's past emissions inspections. We're all good to go there. We were technically exempt. Uh, but we have that new throttle body in which that we have to start tuning. And before I do a video on going through the process of tuning for the new throttle body, I thought, hey, let's talk about when you actually need to get in there and tune your car again. Because a lot of times we throw some of these specific bolt-on mods on there, they don't need tune adjustments made. Uh, the tuning hierarchy, as I like to think of it, is math, speed density, spark, and then finally transmission. Transmission, kind of once we get that thing dialed in, unless we're doing something specific to the transmission, we should not have any issues outside of maybe on automatics bumping the rev limiter because there gets to be a point where you maybe are making enough power that the vehicle is not shifting fast enough and we might have to lower down the commanded shift time. But outside of that, kind of the same thing for the ordeal on the spark. Once we get the spark kind of brought up to that edge that we're looking for and then take a couple degrees out to run safe, the, you know, that is not something that's quite as dynamic as airflow. Not to say that we don't need to check that out. A good way uh, to double check your spark is every once in a while throw a log in there and check out your uh, knock retard. Make sure that you're not getting knock retard after a good long drive with a couple wide open throttle pulls. That should give you some insight as to whether or not your spark table is good. Now, when it comes to your engine, we just need to remember that this thing is just a giant air pump. That's how it makes power, is how much air this motor can process. So if for some reason we change how much air the motor can process, then we might need to tune. But it also depends on uh, where in the placement it is, because once we get the mass airflow sensor dialed in, uh, generally, as long as we don't add more airflow on the top end, such as a boosted application, uh, this is going to clean up any air automatically. Wide open throttle, you know, that's where we might see a tiny bit more air, but it's pretty quick to see on a log whether or not you need to adjust for the mass airflow sensor. That's the nice thing about mass airflow sensors are, short of changing the diameter of your intake tube, this thing will read correct no matter what the other mods are. Now, speed density is a little bit of a different situation. In that case, yeah, there's a lot of times that you will have to come back in and make adjustments. But we also remember that speed density generally is not the primary form of fueling. It is kind of supplementary to the mass airflow sensor. And so long as it's not way off, if we haven't done something very drastic, like a cold air intake, not gonna have to do it. Headers, probably not gonna have to do it. Cam, definitely gonna have to do it. But as I said, the speed density stuff, a little more forgiving because a lot of the time is spent on the mass airflow sensor as far as what is commanding the airflow for fueling. So keep that in mind. Now, in the case of the throttle body here, I don't think that we've necessarily picked up any more airflow on the top end. We already had a ported throttle body in there, but it has changed the dynamics on the bottom end. And that's why we're gonna to have to go in and tune the speed density map. Now the mass airflow, it will still be good for this throttle body because on the bottom end, we have not changed the scaling for mass as far as air induction is considered, or uh, as far as we care on that one. But say if we were to go in there and put a smaller pulley on the supercharger, suddenly we are going higher than we've ever gone. As much air that we can push through this thing, we will exceed the tune that we have on this mass airflow sensor. So that's something to keep in mind there. Another quick way that you can tell is also just go in, pull a log, and look at your long-term fuel trims. If you have your narrow band, your closed loop stuff enabled, uh, you can go in, look at those fuel trims, and look to see how far off they're getting. As you add bolt-on mods, the stock system will make the adjustments to keep you where you need to be. Whenever we go in and we tune something like the mass airflow sensor or the speed density, we shoot for that plus or minus 5%, and then we let closed loop fix it 
the rest of it. The nice thing about it is once we have wide open throttle dialed in and we know that that's rich, we don't have to worry too much about it. It's always safe to have your wide open throttle a little bit richer and that way if we do lean out on the bottom end because we've added a new mod like a cold air intake or headers, we kind of have some buffer room right there. But if you were to go in and look at your long term fuel trims and see that it is skewed more than 10% one way or the other, that's a good indication that you probably need to go ahead and do a retune. So hopefully this has helped you out a little bit. I know that the want to go out and keep on tuning and trying to make additional power is there, but let's be realistic. The more that we fiddle with things, the more that we might get off the actual mark. There's a such thing as having a good tune and there's such thing as beating a tune to death where we actually start skewing things out and causing issues further down the road. So get your tune dialed in, make it safe, and leave it as is until you actually need to go in and tune something. There's nothing wrong with fiddling around, just make sure that you leave a save point behind where you know that you had everything running well that you can revert back to after messing with things. A lot of the stuff that I see people do out there makes absolutely no sense, does not help. If anything, it just compounds issues further down the road. And you know what? You should just save yourself the time. Don't get overzealous. Tuning's great. We all love tuning or else we wouldn't be here. But you can overdo it in a lot of situations. The other thing is, make sure your car is running properly. Any kind of issues that existed before the tune will get compounded and made worse after the tune. Almost every single time. And that is something that will just cause you to bang your head against the wall time after time, is trying to tune out an issue that is a mechanical problem on the vehicle. So once again, make sure that everything is in good condition before you start the tuning process. It's a good idea to make sure that everything's in good condition before you do a modification, unless the modification is replacing a part that is bad. So if you are going in and you are replacing your headers because you have a leak, that's a good thing because we are fixing the leak in the process. But if you're replacing something else and you already have a header leak, you're going to be fighting yourself you know, along the way. So don't do that. You know, Just keep in mind that, that every issue that you have will compound, create more problems, and just give you fits further down the road. Well, hopefully you guys have a little bit of a better idea of when you actually need to go in and tune. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to hit up the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, throw that thumbs up and don't be afraid to check out the links. We've got the links to the website, to the merch site, to the Patreon, all that stuff down there. I've tried to kind of condense it so there's not so many links down there, but make sure to go down there and check those out for more information. The Patreon's blowing up as usual. Good place to get help. 15 bucks a month, you can get some tuning assistance. Other than that, I want to thank you for taking the time to support the channel as always. Remember, ABT, always be tuning, and thanks for stopping by the garage.